Uh, hi, folks. I'm out here in the field next to a middle school collecting data points using the RGIS app and system. This is augmented reality, and it is on the cutting edge of geospatial technologies. Let's get started. In other videos, I talk about how to mine local data sources, how to examine the REST endpoints and the feature services so that you can build the kinds of things that we're actually going to look at out in the field with the Argus Solutions lens. These are the kinds of data sets that you can look at. You're going to build your servers and your data scenes with this solution so that when you're out in the field, as we'll see in a moment, you're going to see the features that your local government agencies, academia, maybe even nonprofits, private industry have created. For example, accident data right here. We're going to take a look at that out in the field right now. So compare this photo, standard photo, with this. This is in the Argus lens. So now I'm looking at the actual accident data. All these points on here came from feature services that, in my case, my local government agencies are hosting. So that you can actually, with the Argus lens app, query the accidents, injuries, the age, the date, the time of day, whether there was some sort of impairment involved, whether there was some sort of weather involved. So here I am out in the field looking at the attributes for each one of these. LPD is Lakewood Police Department. And then I've got some that are from the state, Colorado State Patrol. But uh, take a look at this. You know, one of the things that's grim is look at the number of accidents. Like at this intersection alone, now this is about a 15 year period. But right here in this intersection, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven accidents. As I pan around, I'm seeing the actual location of the accident. So each one of those dots is a record of where that accident happened. And as you can see here, I've got all kinds of attributes, at least 35 or 40 attributes in each one of these accidents. So how would you use this in education? Well, one thing is you're, you're looking at data that's out in the field. So you're doing some field work, but you're also using geotechnology. You're talking about feature services and ArcGIS Online and using web apps. And another thing is, what if you anchored this in every, every school has got a safety program, especially at the high school level where, where students are learning how to drive. So if this is part of your safety program saying, hey, look, these are real accidents. People were injured. People had fender benders and all kinds of other things. And also uh, related to alcohol and drug uh, prevention, look at how many of these were imp impairment uh, related. So somebody was impaired in some way. So again, anchoring it in the very real and grim situation of, hey, we need to uh, ramp up the awareness of safety. And here's another set of data that I'm looking at out in the field. Look at this. I've got crosswalks, light poles, there's XL energy. You can see the wattage for this particular signal, for example, school speed limit. And it's a flashing light uh, that uh, warns people to slow down. In the case of a school, you've got the Again, attributes for every single one of these features out in the field. Now, more is not always better. I'm selecting features that are dense on the landscape, storm drains. Here I've got streets, parcels, as you saw, accidents, floodplains, signs, things like that. In other words, I'm not taking something that is only spaced at every mile every or every kilometer. I'm actually looking at something that's fairly densely packed on the landscape. So that way I don't have to walk miles and miles or kilometers and kilometers uh, to see features. But here I've got a combination of point data and line data. I've got the streets and the, and the utilities, but also the lights, the signals. So I can see attributes for those signals and who repaired it and when and the wattage and all kinds of things. Here out on the landscape, you can see all these features. Also, you can discuss and have teachable moments about the spatial accuracy of these features. Are the points right on, for example, this light pole, or is it spaced a little bit away from the light pole and why? So all kinds of discussions about spatial accuracy in mapping and geotechnologies and the accuracy level needed for certain things. So here's some parcel data. This gets into a bit of location privacy. Here you can see on the app, I can see 10 meters away, 20 meters away, the directions, all kinds of different things you can teach from the app itself, but also 
touching on location privacy, if you load the parcel data, you're going to be able to see who actually owns all that property and talk about what information is public and what information is private. Fascinating. It's not just the tech. It's the societal issues around the tech, I think, that are equally engaging and important to teach about. So here we are back out in the field here in a moment looking at now I've got features, as you can see, in this case, signs. And the sign said... Here's some light poles. So I'm on that school campus and I'm seeing a lot of density of these features. Again, as I'm just using the app, just like a camera app on your phone, but here, of course, you're seeing the things that are on the landscape. And you know what, folks, you're touching the future. This is going to be very commonplace with glasses and even maybe contact lenses and even corneal implants, who knows, someday, where you're gonna get attributes all kinds of information about the natural environment and the built environment just by moving your head around uh, as you're walking around or biking around or driving around on the landscape. So this is, again, touching the future. And I think it's important for students to use technology in meaningful ways. And one of those things is geographic information systems, geotechnology, remote sensing, and also augmented reality and the Internet of Things and 3D and 2D mapping uh, applications, building information management, artificial intelligence, machine learning, all these things are important to be not just teaching the tech about, but also, again, teaching about societal issues. Now, as I walk around the campus here, I'm seeing the attributes, for example, for these storm drains. These are something, uh, it's one of those typical things on the landscape where students and the general public don't really think about. But when there's a big rain event or a big amount of snow melt, as we have here in Colorado, those storm drains are critical uh, for uh, preventing flooding. And so they are very necessary. It's not something you think about normally when you're walking around. But here I'm looking at um, some polygons, some point data, some line data. So again, on the geotechnology side, what is point line and polygon and where do these things matter? So we've got, again, this sign and the attributes for the sign as well as the signal that's beneath the sign, as you can see right here, when it was last inspected who is maintained by. All these things have to be maintained and all these things have to be mapped, right? They're not just points on a on a paper map or a piece of film as in the past. We've got a geographic information system that, that really runs behind the scenes. And that's another teachable moment is that how GIS is actually being used to make a better, more resilient, safer, happier world. Thanks.